Listen, I, I have a concern, okay? And I know that this vehicle has a plugged exhaust. And um, we've, done, we've done these pressure transducer things before. Let me just fill you in with, with where we are. Um, this is the driver's side. There's your zero PSI line, okay? And this would be, just look at the dark blue one. Don't look at the top one, Cap, okay? That's my reference waveform. Get that? Don't look at that. I'm not looking at that. Okay. Um, there's my, my 720 and my 180 cursors. And, and so this is your power stroke here. And what we're looking at in that area, uh, in this area is our exhaust. And you can see that I'm hitting, you know, almost almost 22 PSI of exhaust back pressure. There's zero PSI. And what I want you focused on would be this area in here, that line which is 10 PSI, and then that one which is about 20 PSI. And this is my exhaust event in here, Cap. Okay? So let's do that again. Here's my 720 and we'll start with this one. So compression or power right here, right. and then exhaust, that's your exhaust stroke. It's another way to identify a plugged exhaust when you don't feel like taking the O2s out and you can't get to them, okay? So definitely plugged exhaust, no question about it. I've done this before, I'm comfortable with that reading. And then my hopes were, well, it's dual cats and, and it, it's driver's side was where he had his misfire, four and five, and, and we're confident driver's side's worse. So I, I pulled up the passenger side, and that's what you're looking at here. This, this is the passenger side, and so maybe, maybe as a, as a focus for that, uh, look in, just focus on on this event because it's re really where I was able to put the two over top of each other. And you can see the driver side's not as bad, but I have clearly, clearly I have issues with that one even too. If you look at that number, I'm having trouble with these cursors. You know, that one's at uh, 11 PSI, where, you know, it's better, but, okay, still bad. So here's the exhaust design. It's goofy. It's got a, here's your, here's your cylinder head. Here's your manifold. There's a small cat here. There's a small cat here, and they go into basically a, a Y pipe. Then there's another cat and another cat and the muffler's way down here. So uh, my hopes were in showing, you know, what's your name? Chris. Chris, as we're hoping to, you know, save him money and, and really not just doing a back pressure test like up here on the, on the manifold or up at the EGR or doing a general back pressure test like we normally do, you know, take it off the O2 or DPFE and you say, okay, plug exhaust, you got melted cast. Well, which one? In the field, it's change them all. You know, that's pretty much what you did. Right. Now, if this had true duels, we'd still be able to do that, right. but it doesn't. And my concern is when I'm on the, this side, this passenger side, which would be my dim line here, the one that has roughly, let's call that 10 PSI, and this one's 20 PSI, I know for a fact my driver's side is worse than my passenger side. But my concern is, is this one plugged and causing my exhaust gases are coming down this way and, and causing a backup and that I would read that backup in that cylinder. I think it's very real possibility. Um, as far as the front ones go and which one, doesn't matter because it's one unit, it's one head pipe, they're together. How could we, if we... Let me ask you this. Please. Why, if it's the cat you pointed out with the red, plugged, this one, I think, uh, is... No, no, down at the bottom. Oh, right this there. one here. That's where you started. This one here? Yeah. And you said about exhaust reversing back. Yes. Why would we have such a difference in waveform? Great question. I, I skipped that in my mind. I'm like, I know this one's damaged. I know that for sure. And I would say that uh, this would be maybe my worst one. Is, is it possible pieces of this one made its way into this one? And it's sitting in the front of it and it doesn't even need this cat at all. And then those pieces from this cat are causing a backup in pressure and I'm reading that in my cylinder number one. I, I think it's, look, if that exhaust valve opens to that open manifold, anything in that manifold and everything attached to that exhaust, I'm going to see it even though I'm in the cylinder. Would you agree with me there?
cap. In this event, I'm talking about my, my line right here. So this 10 PSI, when that exhaust valve opens, there's something else here too. If you look at this line, you see how, the, see how that one's real sharp and then drops and then goes high? And this one's not like that. I don't know if that's significant too. And, and uh, I don't know if that's part of it. I just, it's just something else. You know, I was telling these guys too, it's good to do this together. This is only the second time I've ever done this with a plugged cap. And I know they're plugged, um, but really looking at these waveforms can really mess you up sometimes. We learned that on the Hummer series, didn't we? And we I finally got it after part six or part eight. I right, like got yeah. it down, right. but and we were correct in the call on that. But um, what, what are our options? If we were if we were trying to save Chris money, I think the only option is going to be to literally drill a hole in here and take a back pressure measurement. Drill a hole here and take a back pressure measurement. What do you think? To save these cats. So what I don't want to tell him to do is to change them all. I know for a fact we're changing the front ones. I think we can, well do I know that for a fact? I, I, I think if it was one of the back ones, if it was only this one, wouldn't my pressures be the, pretty close to being the same here and here? And I'm seeing a pressure difference of 10 PSI. So that alone is telling me that my front ones are an issue. And it's not just a back one. Does that make sense? Yep. So you need the front cats for sure, Chris. Okay. All right. Now, what about how would we proceed? How would you proceed? Take this head pipe off and, and just visually look in there and see if we see pieces of cross our fingers. Or could we have two restricted front cats only? I'm going to use it. This is a messy picture now. Could, could we have two front cats only? Say this one's plugged, but, but this one's plugged worse, and this one's fine. And if we drilled in here and put a back pressure gauge on that, that would tell us that. One test, one drill, one mark in front of this cap in front of this cap. Be nice if I had an O2, I don't. The, the rear O2 is way down here. Right. I, don't, I don't have another O2 That's not port. An option. It's not an option. I feel like if I This is the difference, be, this could be the difference between $500 if you were, uh, think, you know, single mom, got a bunch of kids and you need, you know, I don't know, is there a way we can, we can be a little bit more, what do you think, Cap? <laughs> And one of you guys had mentioned too, uh, measuring uh, tailpipe, you know, CO and stuff. We're not worried about functional here of the cat. We're worried about flow. There's two completely different things. I just feel like if that cat was plugged up, both the front cats would read the same amount of pressure. If this, you're talking about uh, this one? Yeah. If this cat was plugged, I, I, that's what I thought too. I mean, I, there, but there's three cylinders on each side. I would think that our pressures would be equal. Would uh, it make a difference? No, I, I, I think we're all on the same page with that part, Dave. That we know we need a front one because okay. we because we have a pressure difference. We can say confidently that this front this front assembly has an issue. What we're what we're debating right now is: Do we also sell this customer, Chris, a student? Do we also sell him this cat or not? Or, you know, for that matter, this cat or not? I'm thinking two spots cat. I'm thinking we got to drill it here, measure it here, and drill it here and measure it here before we do anything else. We can tack up the little drill marks when we're done, can't we? I think we should do it. What do you think? If you yeah. were in the field and you didn't feel like drilling, what are you doing? You're selling a bunch of cats. You're selling a bunch of cats. cats. I, there's you don't no care. You're just selling cats. That's right. There's no other way around. But that's not good enough for me either. It's not. I want to know. I want to know too. <laughs> but I, I, how how are we feeling? Are you feeling the same way as me with these front these front cats? With this pressure difference in, that we have here, 
I don't, I don't know of another variable for that. I did them at idle. I did them. Oh, that, that's the other thing too. Uh, we even saw on the bank one, we saw at idle even a different. I'll show you that. Not quite the same RPM, um, but what I'm looking at, Cap. Well, let me zoom on this a little bit just kind of looking in that same exhaust area and again the light one different rpm so ignore the length guys you guys that are watching ignore the the length of the exhaust stroke i'm at a different rpm but what i want you guys to look at would be look at the pressure right there is uh that is not 128 psi why am i 3.8 oh thank you <laughs> yeah that's three uh, my other cursor is way up there, I guess. Um, it shouldn't even be part of this equation right now. I don't know why that's... Anyway. All right, so that pressure right there, that's cursor 2. That's 3.8 PSI as opposed to uh, bank 1, which is really nothing at all. I don't even know what that number means, but let's not zoom. You can see it better here. Pretty much zero, right? So anyway, we can see it even pressures at idle in that exhaust event on bank two, which is the one where he had cylinders four and five that were misfiring for 20 minutes. And this problem was not there, correct? Mm -hmm. It ran fine. You did not have a low power condition till after the misfire and then it was it immediately after chris or was it it was almost immediately after. so it was that 20 minutes of driving with that misfire killed this cat and you're pretty sure you didn't do anything on the passenger side nope. seeing that makes me concerned that we in our here's here's what i think and i'm not sure but front our front cats we come into a Y, then this cat, then this cat. And this is the one, cylinders four and five were the, on this side were the ones with the misfire. I know this one's cooked. And I think this one's bad too. And I, if this was a true dual system, I think this one's probably okay, is my guess, just based on what he's telling me. However, Chris, we don't, the two front ones, they come together. We need to prove it. We need to drill here, gauge, drill here, gauge, because we still could have an issue with that one too. And like Cap said, if you're in the field, you're putting a bunch of cats on this thing. And this is big bucks. This is big bucks. And that could very well explain the way you have that drawn, or whatever, that could very well explain why your right bank it has pressure, but it's a little bit lower if that cat's okay, but the downstream one further is plugged. Yes, and that, so that could, could, yes, that I'm that following could. you. And that could also explain, that's a good point, Cap. That could also explain why on this picture, why we have such a sharp rise immediately on this one. And I'm looking at, let's get these cursors out of here. Compared to, to, I think it was that one. Yeah, you see the, you see this real sudden sharp rise when that exhaust valve opens on on bank two, as opposed to it looks pretty normal, and then it gradually, and we saw that too live. It kind of gradually climbed. Did you guys notice that? Yeah. Where this one, would, uh, if I remember, I'll have to go back and look at it, because we were doing video too. Uh, it looked like this is bank two. This is bank two where we had cylinders four and five with the misfire. That's kind of what you were getting at, mm -hmm. right, Cap? Yeah, Tom. I was wondering if besides drilling and testing pressure, if you could do like just do temp temperature readings. Temperature. Before and after, maybe it might vary 
Yeah, uh, I have never really been a fan of temperature readings. No. Um, well, I mean, the, the, the test for temperatures have always been to measure the inlet and outlet of a cat to see if the cat's functional. Uh, it's not a flow test. Coincide with efficiency. Yeah, yeah. efficiency, not flow. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So when you're, you look at a cat and let's say, you know, you have your exhaust is coming in here and coming out here. Theory says measure your outlet temperature and your outlet temperature should be hotter than the inlet if the cat is functional. Now we're not talking about flow, right? When we're talking about flow issues, you can't say this. You can't say, well, if your outlet is cooler, then you have a restricted cat. You can't say that because the mixture could be good. Uh, the cat's not lit off. There are variables to that. And any test that has variables, I don't like it as a diagnostic guide that says, hey, definitely that's an issue. That makes sense. Uh, so I don't like the temperature. So it's just normal test. I like to see if it really works. Efficiency yeah. test. Yes, and even even with the efficiency test, I'm um, I'm not liking the the temperature one. Drilling and measuring is my only option. Be better than unbolting it and look at it. Yeah, and even looking at it doesn't yeah, tell you. Can't good. see all good. of those paths in that honeycomb cat. And then you won't even be able to look at the second one either. I, I would like to follow this up, Cap, if you could help me out. Absolutely. And far as welding the the hole that we drill, or I'll have Chris drill the hole and you weld it up, <laughs> we'll take the measurement. I say we drill a hole and put a sheet metal screw in it. I, <laughs> I'm fine with that. Do we have an adapter with our pressure gauge that, that goes in like that? Do you know? I'm sure we can build. We can make something. We you, we need to make you need to make me something, Cap. Okay. All right. Then we'll follow this up with some with some drilling me measurements. You can price your front cat because you're definitely going to need that. We're we're up in the air on your on your intermediate ones. Okay. Some bonus material here on this. Ford Ranger with plug cats. We mentioned doing this test as uh, Mr. Kaplan and I were talking and we're doing it. So you see I have a, a hole drilled already right, uh, right here, which is gonna be between my two downstream cats. Uh, let's make sure I'm being clear on what I'm showing you here. So this is, this is the last cat in, in line. I'm in between the cat, so I'm gonna take a reading there, which will tell me about this guy. And then this is the, the front, um, not the front, very front cat, but the one in front of the last one. And to measure this one for a restriction, um, I actually put two holes, probably didn't need to do both, but I'm not sure the piping inside. So I'll measure here and here, and uh, we'll compare uh, our readings and see what we have. So we'll start in the back first. All right, so you guys can see the tool I'm using. I'm just using a, a back pressure gauge, and I changed the adapter on the end to just a rubber tip. We did drill holes, and of course, we'll fix the holes when we're done. Okay, putting this rubber tip over our downstream hole, testing the last cat in line first. Go ahead, start it. Looks good at idle. 3,000. Nothing wrong with that one, moving up to the next one in line. All right, now this one, you know, I know I have a hole in both pipes, but this one is going to test this cat right here. Not the two front ones, but the next one down. So we'll check them both, starting here. Looks good at idle. And we'll go three grand in a second. I'll give you them both at idle. That was me moving. We're at zero on both, both there and there. Okay, 3,000. Okay, shut that off for a second. All right, so here's what we know, guys. 
this first cat where it goes two into one. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not restricted. We also know that our back cat is not restricted. Now, I know I didn't have to start back here and drill this hole. I could have, I could have just gone with the front first, and if we had good readings up front, then I would have known that this one was good, but I, I'm only showing this just for variables. After thinking about doing this, I did not need to drill this back hole. I should have started up front and just taken my readings. Um, I guess I was just being a little proactive with shooting a video. In case I had high readings up front, before we would condemn this front cat, we would have had to come back here and measure this one. Now, if we have good readings up here on this one, there would have been no reason to drill this hole. So I just did it all at once, no big deal. We know for sure these two cats are good. And so that means that our front ones, both front ones are restricted. Let's do another reading and we'll do the driver's side one, the one that was really bad on the scope. All right, so I did drill a hole in this too, and I don't normally do this, but we had some other holes we have to fix anyway. And uh, this front head pipe's getting replaced. So this will be idle and 3000 on this front one. Okay, go ahead, start it. There's my idle number. Go ahead, 3000. All right, hold up. It's melting. 3000. Okay. Clearly restricted, shut it off. All right, as you can see, no question about it, our scope was correct in identifying this cat being restricted. And remember, we also had concerns of this passenger side cat over here, and we showed high pressure in the in cylinder on that side as well. Um, I would like to show you that one too, but unfortunately I have no room to get in there to drill a hole on this side. And so two things, one, um, comfortable with the scope a lot more now and what we've seen, definitely a plugged cat driver's side, passenger side is also restricted based on the scope readings. And, uh, you know what, these are both getting replaced together. So really not a need to check that passenger side any further. Uh, I'm a lot more comfortable with the scope readings. Hopefully you guys are too. Great alternative method of identifying restricted exhaust systems using an in-cylinder pressure transducer. All right, I'm not done. I lied. I couldn't let this go by not questioning that front cat on this passenger side and why we only had a two-cylinder misfire on the driver's side and how would that melt the passenger side cat. And so I talked to Mr. Kaplan, again, our engine teacher, and we were, we were talking about it. I was concerned maybe somehow we're getting a back feed on our scope from valve overlap and intake pressures. And, and, and we'll maybe talk more about that later, but I think maybe in short, I'm thinking the high uh, pressure that I was seeing on the exhaust on this side during the exhaust stroke on the passenger side could very well be from valve overlap, pressure build up on the pass on the driver's side, pressure in the intake, back pressure in the intake, intake valve opens, we see it on the passenger side. I'm not sure, but I needed to do this test to confirm it. You know, the whole idea of this video uh, for both videos really is learning another way to do back pressure testing and we need to learn our variable. So this one will tell me what I want to know. I'm going to hold this over the hole that I drilled. And I know you guys are thinking, why'd you drill the hole? Why don't you take the O2 out? Well, this pipe's getting changed anyway. I didn't want to dig the O2 out right now. So I'm right next to the O2 upstream. Okay. Um, go ahead, start it. Three thousand. Okay. All right, shut it off. So as you guys can see, this cat on this passenger side, the upstream cat, is not restricted. And so uh, it just seems like every time I uh, 
Seems like every time I think I got this pressure transducer waveforms down, something else throws a curveball at me, and this is another one. And uh, I'm sure this will make for a good discussion. We'll, we'll, I think maybe what we'll do is is uh, expand on this more later for sure. Why are we seeing high exhaust pressure on the passenger side when only the driver side's plugged up? Um, I think the answer is valve overlap. And I'll be curious to hear your guys' comments on that. So hopefully we learn something together on this. I know I did.